This video is all about how you use the Microsoft network to connect together two express route circuits. So this is our base diagram. We see we've got two express route circuits. The black one with on-premises, which is this 192.168.2.0 slash 24 address space. And then we have the red express route circuit on top. Now for us, this is an express route circuit that connects us through to an AVS environment. That's an Azure VMware solutions environment. Check out Jose Marino's blog post link below for a very quick primer on why AVS uses express route. But the red circuit could equally be any other express route circuit that you have at a different peering location inside of Azure, as long as that peering location supports the features we will discuss in the video. So why is this video required? Why can't I just connect red to black by default? Well, the thing to understand is, even if you connect your express route circuits like this, so you have an Azure virtual network, inside of which you have a express route gateway, this blue icon here, even if you connect your express route circuits like this, the red environment here won't be able to talk to the black environment. In fact, it won't even know it exists. And that's because by default, the express route gateway in the VNet doesn't act as a transit device. So I'm going to talk through four different options you've got for making the Azure environment bridge red to black. And each of them have got pros and cons. And we're going to talk about it through the lens of Azure VMware solutions, because this is a, a common scenario where you do need to bridge express route circuits for connectivity from on-premises into AVS. Option one is definitely the simplest option to visualize. The first thing I'm going to do is verify that indeed we do not have reachability here. So we can do that by quickly looking at two things. First of all, I've got an RDP session on a machine within the black environment here. So you can see I'm pinging from 192.168.2.1, I'm pinging 62.50, and that traffic's not getting through. To verify that further, we can check the routing table on the black express route circuit, and we'll check to see if it even knows about this 192.168.62.0 subnet. So we can see the black circuit knows about our black on-premises environment, but it has no idea that our red environment, which is Azure VMware Solutions, even exists. The first option we have for making that happen is Global Reach. And Global Reach, again, which is covered in detail in Jose Marino's post, is very simply bridging these two express route circuits with an internal BGP session so that they exchange routes. So let's go and do that now. I'll leave a link to the guide on how you enable Global Reach, but it's pretty straightforward. We capture our existing express route circuit, and then using the information provided by the owner of the other circuit, we pass in the variables representing the resource ID, and we pass in our authorization key, and we also pass in a slash 29 range, which is used internally for the BGP periods used for global reach, and then we save and set that express route circuit. And here we see when that's finished, our machine starting to ping. And you see that global reach connection is successful. If we refresh our route table, we can see now on the black circuit, we are actually learning the 62.0 slash 24 range. I'm going to remove that global reach connection now, reset our lab to baseline. Since we took the global reach out, we can see our ping has stopped and our lab is back to the baseline. The second option we have is to use a new feature of Azure Virtual WAN called Routing Intent, which is currently in preview. And this enables us to route express route circuit to express route circuit via the Virtual WAN Hub via an Azure Firewall. The thing to realize is without this Virtual WAN routing feature, a virtual WAN hub has the same constraint as a regular express route gateway in that you can't bridge red to black in this diagram. However, with the routing intent preview feature, 
which I'll link to below, it lets us insert Azure Firewall in all branch to branch flows, which includes Express Route Connection to Express Route Connection. Let me show you what that looks like in the portal. Here's my virtual WAN hub. You can see I've got my black on prem intercloud circuit connected. And I've also got my second connection down here, which goes towards Azure VMware Solutions. So they're both connected to this hub. Now, just connecting them to the hub doesn't make that transit behavior that we're looking for happen. To do that, we have to use the routing intent feature. To make this possible, we have to force the private traffic via Azure Firewall. And we also have to enable the routing intent feature when we do this by enabling this toggle here called Interhub. Before you use this feature, you have to have your subscription allow listed by the Azure Virtual WAN product team. This will take a few minutes to configure the relevant gateways and firewall and routing behind the scenes. Let's come back when it's done. My Azure Firewall Manager settings have now saved. If I recheck my VM, I can see that connectivity has been reinstated. Note that the latency is now slightly higher. This is because we're passing traffic via the Azure region, which is some ways from the point of presence in terms of geographical distance. Let's once again check the routing information on our Black Express route circuit. Remember, our AVS subnet is 192.168.62.0.24. Note that we do not have that specific prefix in our routing table, but we do have connectivity. What's happening here? You can see that we've got a summary route, a slash 16 route, which actually is part of the RFC 1918 address space. You can see also we have the 172 range and the 10 range. In fact, our Azure Virtual WAN hub, when we enable the routing 10 feature, is advertising out the summary address space to both express route circuits, therein sucking all traffic effectively to a gateway of last resort in terms of private traffic. This is enabling our virtual WAN hub to act as a transit router and using an internal mechanism inside of the hub, we route traffic via Azure Firewall. In fact, if I was to go into my Azure Firewall policy configuration and deny the traffic, we would see that the pings would stop. Next pattern we're going to walk through, number three, is using a regular customer managed virtual network in combination with route server, Azure route server, and a network virtual appliance. So behind the scenes here, I've built a lab that consists of a regular virtual network with an express route gateway inside of it. I've deployed Azure route server. I've connected it to a network virtual appliance, Cisco CSR in my case. I've connected BGP between the CSR and Azure Route Server, and I've enabled branch to branch connectivity on the route server, which means it will populate routes to and from the express route gateway in this case. Let's have a look at the default behavior. Here's my route server. You can see the peer IPs there, 10.10.04, 10.10.05. It's connected to my CSR, which has got AS64600, and the ASR's IP address is 10.10.40.4. Here's the CSR. You can see that it's connected to both instances of Azure Route Server. And it's receiving 18 prefixes. You can also see that I'm sending, for testing purposes, 
a loop back. When we look on the route table of our black express route circuit, we can see that that loop back has been received. However, simply deploying Azure Route Server in this configuration won't enable the green line. That's because the express route black prefixes that are learnt via express route are distributed to the NVA, but they are then not redistributed back to express route. So if we want to achieve this green line transit behavior, we have to trick the express route gateway to advertise out some supernets that summarize our on-prem address space. To do that on a Cisco CSR, you can configure a loopback interface and originate that into the written table. Here we've got a loopback interface, which is a summary supernet of my on-prem address prefixes. You can see at the moment, my black on-premise network does not have reachability to AVS. However, as soon as I enter the BGP network command to start distributing that route into the routing table, we can see a change in the behavior. We can see here we're advertising that summary route now to Azure Route Server, which is in turn advertising it to Express Route. We can verify that by refreshing our express route route table. Here we see the summary routes. The benefit of using Azure Route Server in this case against the routing intent feature is that you can customize how large you want this supernet to be. For example, looking at our diagram, we could advertise 2 slash 23s and that would achieve the same thing. And that has much less chance of overlapping with any other networks that you're using. Bear in mind, all we've done so far is to attract traffic into Azure. What's actually happening at the moment is traffic's coming into Azure and hairpinning straight back out of the, the gateway subnet. We haven't actually inserted our NVA in the path. To do that, we need to go one step further. We need to add some UDRs on the gateway subnet that point traffic towards our NVA. With those UDR changes, traffic is now being forced through our CSR. And because the CSR is basically a router, it's accepting that traffic no problem. How can we verify this? On my CSR, I've got a very simple access control list that denies ping traffic from my black on-premises space going anywhere. I'm going to configure that access list and apply it inbound on my NVA interface. We would expect this to block traffic. The ping should stop and prove that our CSR is in the data path. Now you can see straight away that access list is effective. Similarly, if I take the access control list off, the packet starts flowing again. This is representing the functionality you would apply with a layer 4 or layer 3 firewall. We've just shown the NVA being inserted in the path between red and black. And the purple line here represents a BGP peering between the NVA and Azure Route Server. We can verify the routes that Azure Route Server was receiving from our NVA using the command line. You see we've got our test loop back as well as our summary address. Notice how the next hop address here is the NVA interface itself. 
What if we wanted to actually insert Azure Firewall in the flow? Just as we did with the Routing Intent feature with the Virtual WAN Hub, where we inserted the firewall in the flow. What if we want to insert the firewall in the flow here? Well, again, as Jose pointed out in his recent blog, even though Azure Firewall doesn't support BGP, we can use the newly supported BGP attribute of setting the next hop on our MVA to be something other than itself. So let's see how we would do that to achieve the green line here to go via an Azure Firewall deployed in the Customer Manage VNet to bridge that red and black express route circuits. So I've configured my Azure Firewall. It's got the private IP address 10.10.2.4. I've also modified my Cisco CSR PGP configuration. I've added an outbound route map called test to both Azure Route Server peers. This route map matches a prefix list. which matches my summary route and sets the next hop to be 10.10.2.4, which matches our Azure Firewall. If I rerun the command to show my routes that have been learned from my CSR on my Azure Route Server, I can see that I'm now filtering out the loopback because I'm only allowing this summary route, but also notice how the next hop has changed. The next hop is now Azure Firewall, not my NVA. I also need to update the UDRs on my gateway subnet. Now I'm sending traffic via my Azure Firewall. Traffic's going from on-prem into Azure. That route on the gateway subnet sending it to my Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall is then returning the traffic based on its general reachability. How can we prove that traffic is actually going via Azure Firewall? Well, the easiest way to do that is to go to the firewall itself. You see I've got a single rule configured, which is allowing all traffic. Let's change that to deny. We can see that's timed out now based on me modifying the Azure Firewall rule. The traffic is now coming in, being sent to Azure Firewall, and Azure Firewall is blocking that traffic. So we've achieved the same thing. We've inserted Azure Firewall in the flow by using a combination of route server and an NVA setting a custom next hop. 